Mr. Chairman, President Sampaio, Your Excellencies, Ministers, Mr. Bill Gates, Honorable uh, colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen. First, let me thank the Ministry of Health of the People's Republic of China and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for joining the World Health Organization in making this ministerial meeting possible in Beijing. At a time of financial crisis and economic downturn, we need to look very carefully at areas of public health where any lapse in current efforts will bring us a much heavier and bigger bill very soon. And tuberculosis control is a prime example. Tuberculosis also illustrates the need for comprehensive poor health and development policies that tackle the underlying social determinants of health. Today, however, I will focus on the challenges and the consequences that go beyond national TB program. Viewed from one perspective, global TB control is an encouraging success story. In the late 1980s, TB research with a vengeance, largely fueled by the HIV AIDS epidemic. In 1993, World Health Organization declared tuberculosis a global public health emergency. The world responded with commitment, a standardized treatment that works, a comprehensive costed global strategy, and an effective partnership for coordinated implementation. The international response also brought pioneering mechanisms for ensuring that anti-TB medicines are available in sufficient quantities of assured quality at affordable prices. Partly as a result of this, the number of new TB cases peaked in 2004 and then began a slow decline, which continues today. Viewed from another perspective, ladies and gentlemen, tuberculosis has again let me emphasize, TB has again placed the world in a very precarious situation. This is the perspective created by the emergence and spread of drug resistance tuberculosis. The situation is already alarming, and it is poised to grow much worse very quickly. Last year, the WHO report on anti-TB drug resistance documented the highest level of multi-drug resistance ever recorded in a general population. The 2009 WHO TB report estimated that more than half a million new cases of MDR-TB occurred during the year of 2007. Even more alarming, well over half of these cases were resistance to multiple drugs right from the start and not as a direct result of substandard treatment. This is the true alarm bell. This tells us that resistant strains are now circulating in the general population, spreading widely and largely silently in a growing pool of latent infection. This is the true warning signal. If MDRTB is not vigorously addressed, it stands to replace the many drug susceptible strains currently responsible for 95% of the world's TB cases. Even more ominous is the emergence of extensively drug resistant TB or XDR TB, which has now been reported in 55 countries. In most low income countries, especially in Africa, the magnitude of the problem is unknown as this form of TB is so difficult to diagnose. But we do know this. Unchecked, XDR-TB could take us back to the treatment era that predates the development of antibiotics. Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen? Should we allow this to happen? Should we allow the world going back to the pre, 
antibiotics era. For those of you who are very young, you don't know what it looks like. I'm old enough to know. Yes, I look young. <laughs> Preventing and managing drug-resistant TB is a global health imperative. We need a ministerial meeting on MDR and XDR TB because threats of this magnitude demand high-level political awareness and political commitment. They need to be countered by pro poor policy decisions. We need high-level political attention because national TB programs cannot by themselves manage these new threats. The problem has become too big and the danger has become too great. Simply stated, we will not be able to manage drug resistance TB in the absence of a well-functioning health system. We need an across-the-board response. 